What we're going to be going over here is activity-based costing, and we'll look at it in terms of an inventory evaluation method here. And it's really one of the four different methods we, we have here for evaluating our inventory under cost accounting here. And we'll also touch on the input measurement basis here for activity-based costing, and that would be our actual normal or standard costing that we'd be using here. And those would be the costs that flow into and through our inventory here. Okay. Okay, so this is activity-based costing, and we'll look at it in terms of what we capitalize here in inventory versus what is expensed here. Okay, so when we talk about activity-based costing, nothing gets expensed here. Everything gets capitalized in our inventory here. So what we're doing with activity-based costing, we're taking our direct materials, our direct labor, and that would also include any indirect materials and indirect labor, and also our factory overhead, both our variable and our fixed factory overheads here, and also the selling and administrative, both variable and fixed amounts here. And I'm talking about selling and administrative, and we're, you could lump engineering and research and development, all those other support functions that would be supporting your product here. But just lumping all our costs that are involved in producing our product here, they would go into some activity cost pools here. And then our, we would draw out of those activity cost pools and inventory, and we go into our inventory here. So all our costs that we're looking at here produce our products here. It really includes all the costs involved here uh, to run the company to produce the product here. And those are all going into some activity cost pools and then they again go into our inventory and are capitalized. So the point is here, everything, all our costs are being capitalized here in the inventory. Nothing is being expensed. Okay, so then the next thing let's look at here is our cost flow for activity-based costing. And what I'm just showing here, we're gonna have our assets for our, our total manufacturing cost we'll look at here and then we're going to flow up through our cost of goods sold here. Okay so we'll start out with our assets here for our activity cost pools. Those would be all the indirect costs we have in producing our product. That would be our indirect materials, labor here, all our overhead and that would be both our direct and indirect overhead here as well. Plus all those selling and administrative or support functions here for producing our product here. So those would be our activity cost pools for those indirect costs and it also would be the direct overheads here as well. And then we'd also have our direct costs here for direct labor, direct material, and other direct costs here that are traceable to the product. But nonetheless they all get uh, channeled into our asset account here which would be our total manufacturing costs and that would be all our factory and all our support functioned here both indirect and direct costs again our material labor overhead here for indirect and direct amounts here plus all those support functions here i'm just lumping them all together here as selling and administrative costs so that's our total manufacturing costs here and then those total manufacturing costs are going to go into our work and process account here our inventory work and process account here. So what we would do here, we would take our beginning work and process, add to it all those total manufacturing costs. I'm calling them manufacturing costs because they're they're assigned to the plant here to produce that product. And we would subtract from our uh, from that amount here our ending work and process. So beginning work and process plus our total manufacturing costs minus our ending work and process is going to give us our cost of goods manufactured. So cost of goods manufactured goes into our finished goods. So we take our beginning finished goods plus the cost of goods manufactured here, subtract out our ending finished goods, and that's what's going to flow into our cost of goods sold here. And of course the cost of goods sold here is an expense, and that's going to be expensed up against the sales we have for that particular the particular period we're looking at here. Okay. So the key points we want to take away from that is all costs for factory and support functions, both direct and in indirect or variable costs here, are charged to the inventory. And secondly here, beginning and ending inventories for total manufacturing costs, cost of goods manufactured, cost of goods sold, contain all the costs here. To man, uh, all the costs here, uh, really all the uh, company costs here. All right, so that's our cost flow for activity-based costing. Now let's move over here and just look at our basic income statement format here for activity-based costing. And when I say basic, 
it's just a basic amount here. Just to point out here, we have an alternative income statement here used in activity-based costing, and it's a multi-contribution activity-based income statement. But that's a separate topic in itself here. So just as our income statement, the basic format here to find our amounts here, and then I've got the equation. So just starting with our direct material used, it would be our beginning materials here that we have on hand. Add to it any purchase materials for the period subtract out any ending material balances we have. That's going to be the direct materials that we've used here. Then our manufacturing costs, those are just going to be our direct materials here plus those direct labors, our fixed and variable overhead here, and it also be any indirect amounts here for materials and labors. Uh, labor, I'm not showing it here, but it was also be those selling and administrative expenses here, all those uh, support functions here. Add everything together here, and that's going to give you your total manufacturing cost. So your cost of goods sold or manufactured, cost of goods manufacturing would be this total manufacturing cost, plus your beginning work and process, minus your ending work and process. That's going to give you your cost of goods manufactured. So then your cost of goods sold here would be those cost of goods manufactured, plus your beginning finished goods, minus ending, end, any ending finished goods. That's going to give you your cost of goods sold. And then your gross profit here or net income before taxes here is really total sales you have for the period here less the associated cost of goods sold here for those sales. That difference is going to give you your gross profit here. Or it could be called your net income here before taxes. And just remember, there is an alternative income statement here. This is just really a basic one here. But let's that's our basic income statement. And then one last thing here. Just looking at our alternative inventory costing inputs here. Really, what we had here is those three different co uh, cost measurements here, or measurement bases. We're going to have actual costing, normal costing, or standard costing. Though any of those three here could be used for activity-based costing. And they're really how we assign our manufacturing costs here. And our manufacturing costs would have di variable direct, variable overhead here, fixed direct, and fixed overhead amounts here. So just looking at our actual costing here, you're just going to take some actual price or rate here for your manufacturing cost times the actual quantity that you used here. So that would be it for actual costing. And then if you use standard costing, you're going to use some predetermined or standard price or rate here for your manufacturing cost times some standard quantity that's allowed here based on uh, that predetermined amount that you have. Okay, so for standard costing. And then normal costing, it's very much like actual costing. So for variable direct amount, you're just taking the same as actual costing. Actual price times some actual quantity used. And then for your fixed direct, same thing as actual costing. Actual price times some actual quantity used here. But for the variable overhead here and fixed overhead, this is where you're taking some budgeted rate here you have for the period. Again, times some actual quantity used. The only difference between actual costing and normal is for those amounts that were actual costing, you're just taking the actual rate for the period here. For normal costing, you're using a budgeted rate here. And same for your fixed overhead here. Normal costing, you're using a budgeted rate times the actual quantity used versus actual quantity is actual rate times the actual quantity used. And then standard, again, going over that, that was different. That's all based on some predetermined rate here, not some actual rate or price. And again, I predetermine a quantity here, not an actual quantity used for the period, but what is allowed here for your product. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking at here for activity-based costing as an inventory valuation method.